I gotta do some figuring before I say yes or no on this one. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be all done when this is <laughs> starting to happen here. I just have to smack that out. And the beauty is it doesn't need to be a gigantic hole, you know. Can you grab the end of that there for him, Joe? Weight up there too. Up too yeah, I got a big bunch of planters full of dirt. Yeah, that's what I do. I kind of those two ends. Oh, oh yeah, right there. I gotta do some figuring before I say yes or no on this one. <laughs> Kim should say that about some of the jobs that we get. Yeah, yes, he should. More I gotta, gotta do a little bit of thinking. <laughs> you know, like, find a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> like that tree stump. Like that tree stump. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, he was, yeah, oh man. Newer, yeah, I think, at this place, yeah, newer, yeah. I think it was what you said, like four, yeah, within the last five years, or yeah, last, last four or five, five years, years, I think. Well, that would be nice, and we could bring our wall, yeah, we shift her out just a little bit, yeah, to cut that thing right off, but so maybe a couple of weeks. <laughs> so we'll just build it back a little bit, and it'll be fine because we're stepping up. So what's going on is before we can even begin to build our retaining wall, we need to have the deck inspected and a structural plan put together on how that deck is going to be rebuilt. You see, if you look closely down it, you may not see it in the video, but the deck has a slight belly to it, but you can very specifically see that the posts holding up the ends are rotted out. Now the post closest to the house is actually double supported, but the post at the end of the deck is not and so before we get going any further we need to know that game plan so that's why we have him out to assess the structural damage and let us know what the plan for reconstruction is so everything is at a dead stop until we get that information now it's going to hit your wall too isn't it you can make it come at a little angle
not going to rebuild that deck for a very specific reason because my understanding of code is any structure in Minnesota that is technically connected to a house requires frost footings. And when I look at those footings, I can't confirm whether those are to frost depth or surface footings. And I don't want anything to do with that. And I, ba yeah, I basically don't want anything to do with that. Yeah. I don't know what else to say about it. Sometimes you take the work, sometimes you just better off walking away. Okay, so when we first started this and was getting it all planned out and whatnot, uh, we had to miss the footings for the posts, right? So with where we had to start the wall, we were gonna have this little bit of a gap here. And then, you know, with how the course is stepped back, it'd be a little bit bigger of a gap up here. So we got a two by 10 that I'm gonna stick up against the foundation to kind of fill in that gap. And then the wall is gonna hide it so you won't be seeing that sticking out or anything. We got an L bracket. Good old top comms. And then just some wood screws for the board. And then we'll get that up in there and get it all locked in all nice and tight. That problem will be solved. Listen to that. Cooking with gas. So this is what's called a gravity wall. And this is a wall that's under four foot tall that has good backfill conditions and no surcharge. And what surcharge means is there's no load placed on the back side of the wall. And a load does not necessarily just mean a structure behind the wall. It could also mean a hill behind the wall. Now in this case, this is a shorter wall. And then the slope of the wall will actually be angling away from the retaining wall. So this is a perfect example of where and when you can build a gravity retaining wall and you can get away without geogrid or engineering. Now, if this wall was over four foot tall, had a surcharge placed on it, that's be a load from a structure or a hill, or even temporary surcharges. Here's where you gotta be cautious. If I was building a parking spot and the retaining wall was gonna hold up a parking pad, the weight, the temporary weight of that car behind the retaining wall creates a surcharge and then therefore that wall, regardless of what height it would be, would then require engineering. But these little tiny baby walls are just a beauty to build. Simple, fast and easy.
Damn, son. If I hadn't met your wife, I would have assumed you were be single with how fast you were swinging that thing. <laughs> Gravel. Gravel back there? Yeah. I think I'd be able to kind of pack that better, I think. I got that pretty goobered up, so I got I got most of the tube in there. I want my fish and hop in the truck and go for it. Drive all over in the snow. Yeah. Cool part was I, I got to be the driver. It seemed like nobody else at that company had their license. That's funny how that works. <laughs> right. So on the next video, we get the retaining wall wrapped up. We start to build those berms and we go over some details on berm construction that not many people know about. And we have some te technical difficulties on the job that we weren't anticipating because why not? Every single day is a brand new surprise. That's all I got for you on this one. God bless you guys. Go get them and we'll see you on the next one.